Hello everyone, my name is Kim and I will be talking about UX design in the medical field in comparison to consumer UX design. This may not apply to every medical device design in the whole entire world. It is still a very interesting topic to talk about how medical professionals are not like normal people. So throughout my experience, I've uh, worked on a lot of projects and I have gathered three observations that have shown why medical professionals are not like normal people. Let's start with number one. They don't have time. So what I mean by they don't have time is if you have to go from point A to point B in X amount of time um, and you can't do that and someone might die, that might be a bit of a problem and I don't know if normal people have that problem. So let me show you an example. Um, here is a sign-in page and it looks very nice. You can see all the animations, it's nice and beautiful, it's nice and slow, but for medical professionals, it might not be uh, useful. So for consumer design, this is the new trend. This is called motion design. It utilizes motion as feedback uh, to allow users a focal point as well as a more of immersive experience. Animation such as this requires a lot of computational effort and time. And as we all know, doctors or nurses are under extreme duress and animations like these uh, might seem very slow to them. So having something like this might not, as slow as this might not be the most uh, preferable thing. However, motion design is not a bad thing because if you are to show something like this, um, it utilizes motion design. However, it uses the minimal amount to provide enough feedback to users, but not uh, to the extent where it utilizes extra time. In actuality, this user interface, um, a login, it takes half the time as the previous one. So your users are smart and trained. And what I mean is that medical professionals, are, they're trained under some, some sort of IFU. And they're also very smart. So um, sometimes they process things faster than the computer itself. So for example, um, in my experience, I designed a, a device that measures the coagulation rate in trauma patients. And I had originally designed some wireframes that gave them a step-by-step -step wizard on how to connect some of the tubes. When I presented it to a client, I was told to remove the whole entire wizard. Why? Because they found out that most of the users already knew how to connect all the tubes. They Clicked the, they connected all the tubes prematurely and clicked next, 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 and skipped the whole entire wizard and then went about their, their actual business. If you were to provide something such as this, where although to normal consumers it is a very useful, it is, is a very useful um, functionality, a wizard that tells them exactly what to do or how the application works, um, for a medical professional, something like this might be a little too slow for them. And if they need to get somewhere really fast, a skip button might be very useful in this situation. Medical professionals have very specific background knowledge. Just like how the general population can recognize red for stop and green for go on street lights, uh, users in the medical field might have been taught different meanings for specific colors and icons for different uh, uh, functionalities. So for example, um, color coordinations and medical gases, or the color coding for needle gauges. Another thing that's a little bit different is that ha habits from analogous devices carry over. And what I mean is that, take for example, a blood pressure monitor. It's a very familiar equipment. It utilizes a very familiar layout. You can kind of see that uh, many devices, many, many uh, blood pressure monitors, um, display the data in, in a column, the systolic data first, then a diastolic, then the pulse. This layout is so common that if you are to see it in Chinese, you would still understand what is being displayed. The way that products are going into, do, into the direction of wearable devices, familiar experiences are being overshadowed for, for technological advances. For example, this is a wearable blood pressure monitor, and because of the, the limited real estate, the layout for analogous devices cannot be carried over. And so um, looking at this device, I'm not 100% sure what data it is being displayed. Is it the systolic data, diastolic, is it the pulse? Or heck, it could be the time. I have no idea. If you were to provide a UI that is more graphically represented as fun or funky or cute, it may not be perceived as a very serious device. 
um, medical professionals might not use it and think of it as a very reliable piece of uh, piece of medical equipment and might not think that uh, might not believe whatever data is being displayed on it. Um, but in comparison, if you see an interface such as this, which is a lumbar spinal stenosis data manager, um, it is not as flashy as the consumer user interface, but it provides the basic requirements of the graphic user interface. It gets to the point without all the flashy and unnecessary distractions. So another thing is analog doesn't mean outdated. So in medical professionals, we use analog a lot in our devices. In consumer devices, it seems as though they're going more towards um, making everything digital. So for example, this is an image of a smart oven that, rec that can recognize whatever you place into its oven and then will be able to cook it for you without you having to know um, the temperature or the time. You just place the salmon in there, it knows it's salmon, and it cooks it for you. And that's great, that's great. Everyone thinks it's amazing reviews are, are through the roof, four or five stars. It only sometimes recognizes it wrong. It only sometimes overcooks it or undercooks it, sometimes. But if we had a medical device that had at a press of a button, can recognize someone's illness and cure it, that would be awesome, it would be great. Um, but what if it recognizes it wrong? What if someone was to be given chemotherapy when they just had a, the common flu? In that case, someone could potentially be seriously injured. So in medical devices, there are more risks involved. So designers have added some mitigations for those, those risks, such as analog controls for when the digital interface goes kaput, or um, man, uh, manual controls for when um, the device is, is behaving not the way it's supposed to be. So just to summarize everything that I just talked about, um, things to avoid, forcing a user into a workflow and not providing them an exit. So what I mean is that if you are going to give them, um, if there is a pathway they need to follow, provide exit so that if they need to get from point A to point B, but then decide to go to point A to point C, they can get there pretty quickly. And things to avoid is a slow workflow from unnecessary animations. So like I mentioned before, if you are adding an animation for a sake for just for just for fun, um, don't do it. More things to avoid, using non-standard colors and elements. So always do research, always, always, always do research on what are um, standard colors that are used in their field and utilize those, those standards. And avoid hip and funky graphic user interface. So like I mentioned before, if you were to put something cute or funky, they might not perceive it as very serious. And last but not least, to avoid anything that's all digital because if you are to do all digital and something goes wrong you and you don't have anything to control the device and someone's online on the bed and needs some air um, and you can't get, get can, you can't get them air there might be a bit of an issue so seek to if you are designing a user um, user interface for medical devices provide a web of pathways that are easy to follow but where users can choose to take so just the opposite of the first um, first things not to do. Um, give them options, pretty much. Uh, provide appropriate feedback after a user has actioned an item. So what that means is that if um, you are to use animation, just use the appropriate amount. And seek to research on standard knowledge that your users would have. So again, research is very important to understand what your users already know and to apply that knowledge. Design the user interface with a trustworthy personality. So if, if uh, the users believe in the device, then they are happy with it. And that's, what, that's your ultimate goal, really, is for users to be happy with your device. And provide safeties in case your graphic user interface stops working. So like I said before, designers have utilized analog functions, analog controls, in case the, the digital interface goes kaput. That is my presentation. So thank you for listening.